Hello everyone and welcome to the Lay Throm channel. In our videos we cover filming tips, tricks and techniques, equipment and product reviews and many other things that will help you in the world of filmmaking and photography. Check out our videos and don't forget to subscribe. What's up everybody, Matt from Latham here. Welcome back. Glad to see you guys back and all that other good jazz. Today we're actually going to be going you know, into some things that I've been asked multiple times by everybody from gamers to editors and 3D modelers and all that other good stuff. And it comes down to, you know, PC temps. How hot is too hot and what are safe PC temps? Now, keep in mind, this doesn't just apply to only PCs, it also plays into Macs as well. Hardware is hardware, heat is heat. So, without further ado, let's get into a few things here, and let me explain basically what we're going to get into. Now, why is heat a big issue? Well, let's be honest here, you have three different things that is actually the problem at hand. One of which is hardware degradation. You don't want things getting too hot, you don't want, you know, basically your hardware to degrade before it should. Heat is always a problem, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with, whether it's a car, a truck, you know, just yourself, you know, as a human, PC, electronics, what have you, heat is always an issue, heat is always something that needs to be taken into consideration. In with this, you also have the issue of possible data corruption or data loss, mainly because of potential errors and crashes. Honestly, you know, I've been through it before. I'm sure many of you out there have also been through it, but multiple blue screens because of an issue one way or another can lead to, you know, data corruption, data loss. It happens. It's unfortunate. It sucks. But yes, same issue comes into play, especially with hardware degradation. If something's a little too hot and it starts failing, you have to worry about it blue screening and losing stuff and well, let's be honest, data corruption is almost as bad, if not as bad, as complete data loss because you don't always have the ability to recover that data. And then also from a standpoint of electronics, you also have to worry about, you know, some manufacturers out there use a low temp solder on some of their components. You have to worry about the low temp, you know, basically solder melting, going back into a liquid state basically running I don't know about you but you know my motherboard is actually mounted vertically not horizontally so you do have to worry about you know stuff like that and especially with stuff being so close together you know if it does basically liquefy you have to worry about it shorting out other stuff as well and as a quick note before I get into the actual you know temperatures of what is safe what is basically way too hot and where you should be at uh, we're gonna cover a real quick little note try and keep your temps as close to ambient as possible obviously you do not want something that's super cold in a relatively warm environment because you're gonna end up with condensation yes that wonderful water stuff that forms when you know things start sweating so to say that is always bad you don't want that so try and keep your temps as close to ambient as possible to avoid any issue First and foremost, let's start with your CPU. Basic normal operation is between, and I say basic normal operation, it, you know, under a load, not you know, a max stress test, but under a load, you're looking at about 75 to 80 degrees Celsius, or about 167 to 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the fail-safe temperatures for a lot of the Intel chips are actually coming in around 105 degrees Celsius or 221 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when your CPU attempts to dial back performance or throttle itself in order to try and bring temperatures down. Doesn't always mean that that's going to be the case, but it attempts to do it at about 105 degrees C. As far as GPUs are concerned, a lot of the NVIDIAs uh, usually... 100 or um, 100 ADC is a little uh, kind of pushing the threshold so to say so ADC 176 degrees Fahrenheit it's kind of pushing that threshold for Nvidia I believe they actually start throttling at 86 degrees C I think that's basically their safety shutoff according to some of the information that I've researched into AMD video cards they basically state that, you know, you could technically run up to about 95 degrees C on some of their cards or 203 degrees Fahrenheit with no issues whatsoever. 
Now, that's actually quite hot in my opinion. I don't think that you should ever see a video guard, you know, GPU get up to 85 degrees C. Uh, so I'm kind of leery about that number, but according to AMD, that's what they're actually saying. Now, as far as your hard drives are concerned, I've come across a lot of different inf information from the m different manufacturers out there, such as Seagate and Western Digital, um, Hitachi, Toshiba, so on and so forth, where basically, uh, if you average all the information that you're getting, basically they say anything under 70 degrees C or 158 degrees Fahrenheit is perfectly fine. They'll go ahead and run all day long. They have not seen any failures at 70 degrees C. So anything above that they can't really guarantee, but if it's running at 70 degrees C or 158 degrees Fahrenheit, you're all right. Anything over that, you risk possible data corruption, data loss. And finally, your RAM temperatures, I've seen several numbers all over the board. So I, again, kind of basically went through and averaged it a little bit. It seems that 85 degrees C is pretty much that threshold, or 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Granted, I have seen some manufacturers where they actually listed uh, temperature ratings higher than 85 C. However, to be honest with you, if your RAM is trucking in higher than 85 C, there's some issues that you need to get resolved either way. Now, how do you keep those in track, how, or how do you keep things, you know, under the gun and all that other good stuff? You could download something like this. This is a CPU ID HW monitor, or hardware monitor. This will give you an idea what you have going for you, what your temperatures are, and so forth, without actually sitting down and getting, either buying or making thermal couples, and designing a system to actually give you, you know, I don't want to say more accurate readings, but your own individual set of readings. This you can see, I mean, you know, we're just basically idling. The only thing I'm doing right now is capturing video. You know, off the computer, we're looking at about 32 degrees C or 89 degrees Fahrenheit at the CPU temperature. Uh, the package for the 8350 is about, 20, uh, about 22 degrees C or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's fluctuating. I mean, I do have a decent heat sink on there with push-pull fans, but I digress. My RAM, you could actually see, we're hovering about 32-33 degrees Celsius or about 90-91 degrees Fahrenheit. Hard drives, you're getting anywhere from uh, about 26 degrees C all the way up to about 32-33 degrees C, so anywhere from 70 degree, or 78 degrees Fahrenheit to about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. It fluctuates. Some of these are lower than others. Uh, this Hitachi is actually the hottest one of the group, and I haven't seen that temperature actually drop down very much at all. You also have your GPU here, here, and in this case it's an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960. We're looking at about 34 degrees or you know, 34 degrees Celsius or about 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Now all of these numbers are subjective. I mean it's all going to depend on what rig you're running, what kind of cooling measures you have in place, whether it's just 100% air cooled or if it's you know liquid cooled or even if you're getting into some real gnarly and uh, off the wall stuff such as LN2 or you know Freon refrigeration I mean, both of those can get pretty bad pretty quick. You also have to worry about condensation and all that other good stuff, but that's a completely different topic. Yeah, we'll just skip over. Now, in the future, we may actually do a little bit of a video showing you some of the temps that come up uh, with, say, rendering you know, something like a 3D model, rendering video, uh, doing some heavy editing inside of Photoshop and, you know, gaming and whatnot to give you an idea how much those temperatures can fluctuate. If you want to see something like that, by all means, let us know. That's pretty much the end of this video. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. We like questions. We like comments. Shoot them our way. We'll get them, you know, if, if it's a question, we'll answer it as soon as we can. Uh, as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and until next time, we will catch you cats later.